Okay, so let's have a look at how we add attributes to our data. So I'm opening up a separate copy of the data that we've got. Let's zoom to the layer extent. Okay, so we can see we've got lots of fields. And here we have a Tizer Parish Boundary, which kind of relates to those fields. That's a bit of an offset. It's not an enormous problem. And so what we want to do, or we can do this, is tell the underlying data that all of these fields belong to Tizer. So we can either do that in one of two ways. One is we can add an extra field into the spatial data set that says parish, which we've already done. Um, or we can take a unique ID and then tell it that each of these different fields, which has its own unique ID, also has a variable called parish, and we can add that value in. So in this instance, we'll look at adding in some attributes to the um, shape file itself. So we can start toggling the editing. We'll look at some properties. So here we have a parish column, but let's delete it and we'll start again. A column called parish. Now we won't. That we won't get saved. Uh, we can choose what tape to type it is, and this is going to be a text string, and then how long we want that to be. 250, which is enormously long, uh, but it makes some very, very long names. And then we click on OK. So we've now added a new field in to this table, which means that if we look at the information on one of these polygons now, we'll see that we're trying to find some information in here, and we can add stuff in about Parish. Brilliant. Um, so then we can start to select some of these features, look at the attribute table, and we can potentially, let's look at the selected features and bring it to top. Okay, and then double click and tell it in Tizer, which ultimately will take a really, really long time. Another way of dealing with that is choose the selection tool. So you can say select by polygon. Just take all of the things which are in here and right click. Or oh, ultimately, we could look at this as a um, select all the polygons of the Tizo fields uh, which are within the polygons of the Tizo parish boundary layer. But we'll save that for a different time. So we've selected all of these and we can use a field calculator and say that for the selected features we want to update an existing field called parish and we want to give it the expression Okay, now it's all the output will look like. We can click on OK. Ta da! And if we now click on the information, we see that in the parish field up here, that now says Tizo. So we can save our edits. Save layer edits. Let's toggle the editing. Okay, and now we can do exciting things like going into our layer, looking at the style, instead of it being a simple single symbol, let's categorize it on the values which are in Parish. Classify those values, we can give those values a color, or we can delete it, say no color. So if we apply that now, see only the Values, let's deselect. Not 
these little features. So only those fields which have a value called TISO have been selected or coloured, or we can classify and have all in and change our colour ramp to something nicer. Okay. So we're using the attributes associated with our vector file to um, colour a new layer. And so that's you know, the attributes are, are basically uh, defining the visualisation, which is quite nice. So and it's a, a relatively quick way to pick up everything. As I say, we could also do this by say giving unique numbers to each of these fields and then having a, an Excel table um, that says that field with the value 1 is in TISO, field with the value 27 is somewhere else. Um, and ultimately what we want to do is to decide which is going to be the most appropriate way to deal with this, uh, which works for how you know, the people in TISO want to manage this data. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Good night.